It's you. <laughs> it's been a long time. I don't want another boring party. Get off my back. But you promised me a party, and that's what I want. That's up to your skills. What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another update video on Devil May Cry Peak Up Combat. It's been what seems like an eternity since I've covered this thing, which is honestly because of its lack of accessibility to fans around the world. Even though the DMC brand is usually marketed for a worldwide audience, especially here in the West, the game is getting made with the Eastern market in mind, and it's left a lot of fans disappointed and ultimately uninterested. But I have some great news that will undoubtedly get you back on board, so stay tuned. Now before we get started on the video, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views, and the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that'll be provided in the description of this video. But yeah guys, about that Devil May Cry game that occasionally rears its head to remind us that it's still an actual thing. This game has essentially become an anomaly at this point, because when it's presented it looks cool, but casual fans don't know where it comes from or what to make of it. Given its aesthetics, which highly favors Devil May Cry 3 Dante's Awakening, many assume it to be a remake, and anytime there's a cinematic trailer attached to it, many assume it to be a new installment. It also doesn't help that the title of this project has changed from Pinnacle of Combat to Peak of Combat, and for some reason it's still listed as its initial title on certain sites. But as you know, it's a mobile game being made by Chinese developers in collaboration with Capcom. It features action RPG elements with online modes such as team battles and PvP combat. Besides DMC3 being the building block of the game's inspiration, it also takes cues from DMC4, DMC Devil May Cry, and DMC5, making it feel like a special celebration for the franchise. Like, you can tell that this thing is being made by fans who are passionate about Devil May Cry because it has everything that makes the series great, but they're doing it on a mobile handheld level. I haven't had the pleasure of playing it, but apparently it plays a lot like the original line of games on the consoles and PC, but since it's primarily focused towards mobile phones, things obviously had to be simplified, and some of the key features that have become a mainstay in the franchise have been compromised. For example, characters can only hold up to four weapons, and some of the weapon categories aren't even available. Not only that, but two of Dante's styles, the Swordmaster and Gunslinger, were cut from his gameplay, and I'm not gonna lie, that is a major bummer, but it's totally understandable why they decided to keep the trickster and royal guard. A player needs those defense and counter mechanics, especially in an action game where you have a slew of enemies coming at you from all directions. Given the limited amount of space on most phone screens, it's almost impossible to fit all of the usual DMC mechanics on it. Most of the moves from Swordmaster and Gunslinger can easily be mapped to Dante's sword and gun attacks, which are already a primary part of his offense. I know this isn't the best example, but DMC2 was already doing it with all the styles before they were later put into their own category in DMC C3, so I think the devs did what they could with what they had. But besides the minor setbacks, if you even want to call it that, everything else is pretty much the same. Players slash and shoot their way through these massive levels while slaying demons, and as usual, emphasis is placed on the methods used to kill these demons in the form of stylish rankings. You can rank up style points by defeating demons with different skills and weapons, and doing long extended combos will increase your gauge, but using the same move repeatedly will lower and stop the letter ranking until another style is used. You can also dodge and taunt to increase your stylish ranking. Unlike other games in the series, characters don't own signature weapons, so movesets are shared between weapons in the same weapon category. So far, we've had three playable characters in the form of Dante, Lady, and Virgil. And what I love about this game is that they're featuring the versions of these characters when they were at their high points. I mean, don't get me wrong, DMC1 Dante was the version that drew fans in, but it was Dove May Cry 3 Dante that set the blueprint. 
Even though he's the youngest and most green iteration of the character, a lot of his DNA has been carried over to the later entries, making him virtually feel like he hasn't aged, especially in the personality department. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this game hasn't necessarily been accessible to all the fans of the franchise. It's been restricted to mainly the Eastern market, even though it's staying true to that classic DMC formula by featuring the audio in English with foreign subtitles. There have been several closed beta tests with the first one being held during December 17th through the 19th in 2019. The second closed beta was held in 2020 during July the 23rd through the 30th, and by the time 2021 rolled around, the fourth and final closed beta was held during March 25th through April the 1st. The game was released for public testing in mainland China on June 11, 2021. On June 16, 2021, Nibla Joy announced on Twitter that they were working on English and other language localizations of the game, but the post was promptly deleted soon after, making it feel like they weren't even sure if it would even happen. After that, not much was really mentioned about the game. Like it kinda went cold for a while, and unless you weren't following any of their social media handles or their Discord server, you really didn't know what was going on with it. Many including myself wondered if the project was ultimately scrapped, which is a fair assumption to make because in a lot of cases there are titles that get cancelled before they leave that beta phase, but thankfully that's not the case for this game. Back in November of last year, a moderator running the official Peak of Combat Discord confirmed that a global release was still on the table, and just a few days ago we got an awesome announcement trailer for Nero who will be coming via the game's 2.0 update. And this is crazy because for the longest time it seemed like Peak of Combat was going to be nothing more than a retelling of DMC3 while you Utilizing certain demons and set pieces from other entries. As I mentioned earlier, I haven't played this game, but based on what I've seen from the cutscenes, it still seemed to be sticking to the narrative threads from Dante's Awakening. But with Nero's inclusion, things are inevitably going to change in terms of the story. Something's telling me that we may be getting what if scenarios or multiversal events since the game already features stages from the DMC reboot that's sort of been embraced over the years. I also want to point out that this is the most playable Demon Hunters we've ever had in any decade. Devil May Cry game including DMC5, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this game will have PvP and team battles, which is another thing that hasn't been fully realized in any DMC game. The closest we've gotten to team battles was that lackluster cameo system that till this day I still have no idea what Isano and his team included it for. It wasn't necessarily the online co-op players have been asking for. Like I know it's not that big of a deal since this is a mobile game, but considering the fact that we haven't gotten any DMC games since Devil May Cry 5 and it's unclear if Hideaki Itsuno will make another one, it's nice to have something to look forward to. The visuals may not be on the same level as something like Devil May Cry 4, but they're good enough. And from what I've heard, this game can be played on the PC. I appreciate the fact that the devs have been adamant about listening to the fans' feedback on all their social media handles. Considering the fact that there have been multiple beta testings, I think it's safe to assume that the gameplay will be extremely tight and refined. We just need that release date. But until the devs do give that announcement, I want to know what you guys think about this. Are you still interested in this game, or have you forgotten about it and simply moved on? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed it, I ask that you share with all your friends and followers on all the different social media outlets. Sharing is caring. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.